Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're coming to you from outside of the seat of power. Right behind me, North Block and South Block are marking the milestones of the distance covered by the Indian economy. And of course, India marking an important milestone as we turn uh, complete 75 years of our independence. In that context, it's also been an interesting weekend because India has seen the launch, the takeoff of its newest low-cost airline, Akasa Air, backed by veteran investor Rakesh Junjunwala. And uh, it is my pleasure now to invite him uh, on the program. Rakesh Junjunwala, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. And to start with, congratulations on Akasa taking flight. You know, I want to start with exactly that. You've been a long believer in the India story, but there have been many who have questioned your decision to get into Indian aviation because it's a space where many dreams have taken off but many dreams have also been grounded. Uh, so on the back of the fact that now you actually have an airline that has taken flight, how confident do you feel about the India aviation story? Hello? Hello? Mr. Ginger. Mr. Junjurwala, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. yeah, I can. Well, I feel very, very yeah, confident I was, I... about the Indian aviation story. I feel very confident and comfortable. And I feel Akasa will be a very competitive airline. We are not a low-cost airline. Okay, line. We are a frugal airline. So you're saying you're not a low-cost airline, you're a frugal airline. I had the uh, opportunity to sit down with your team at Akasa, Vinay Dube, Aditya Ghosh, uh, and, and they were very clear that they are not going to try and disrupt this space on the back of price. They are going to try and bring in disruptions on the back of customer experience and uh, enhancing efficiencies across uh, the value chain of the airline. Uh, to your point about this being a frugal airline, not necessarily just a low-cost airline, I want to understand from you uh, what you believe is going to be uh, the disruption that Akasa brings to the table and more importantly, what kind of uh, growth potential do you see for the airline and Indian aviation from here on? Well, we Hello? Yes, Mr. Jinjurala, go ahead. Well, we already brought change in the uh, you know, aviation business. You know, our computers are our ordering new chairs in response to the chairs in our flight. And I think, see, you know, India has reached that per capita expenditure, but the discretionary expenditure will go up. And therefore, there will be a lot more flying. And then the Honorable Minister for Civil Aviation has predicted in four years, we'll have 40, we'll go from 14 crore passengers flying a year to 40 crore passengers. You know what that means? That we need about two and a half times the planes that we have today. Hello? Yes, so you're basically saying that we will need a lot more aircraft in the sky to be able to uh, capitalize on the growth in the aviation traffic that uh, is being estimated. Of course, India today, uh, the third largest uh, civil aviation commercial uh, market. But Mr. Junjunwala, you know, you've already uh, 
uh, placed strategic bets on the aviation sector, on the insurance sector as well. What else are you looking at strategically? Where else could you perhaps uh, put in a strategic uh, uh, bid, uh, you know, that you could back strategically? Any other sectors that interest you from a strategic point of view? Public sector banks, public sector banks, and public sector banks. Is what I'm very bullish on. And what's the hypothesis for betting so big on public sector banks? You said you're very bullish on public sector banks. Uh, what's the hypothesis there that's driving your confidence? Pardon? What is the hypothesis that's driving the confidence in public sector banks for you? Why, why do you feel so bullish on public sector banks today? I think because credit demand will go up and as a consequence, the pricing power of banks will go up. And two things is they are very well provided. I mean, I think they will, they will write back the, you know, instead of provisions. So two reasons why I'm very worried. There's the credit growth, gives them pricing power, and they, they are very well provided. Okay, so credit growth you're very bullish on, and that you believe is going to ensure that public sector banks do well, uh, that's the space that you're bullish on. Outside of that, you know, since we are talking no. about uh, India in the context no, of India 75, uh, Mr. Junjunwala, yeah, go ahead. Shireen, those who can borrow are those who can lend, and they have great, public sector banks are great gathering power, great power of gathering deposits. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right in pointing that out. You know, we're talking about uh, India in the context of India at 75, and uh, just some data that we've been looking at. In 1947, Indian GDP at 2.7 lakh crores. Today, in 2022, 197.5 lakh crores. If we talk about forex reserves in 1947 at 3 billion dollars, today at 2022 at 574 billion dollars. We talk about India's market cap. Of course, we can't go all the way back to 1947, but if you just convert uh, 1988 to 2022, 23.6 billion dollars in 1988 in terms of the India market cap versus 3,437 billion dollars in 2022. I'm also looking at some of the big business uh, uh, conglomerates, big business companies that have survived the last 75 years, uh, companies that were born before 1947, Indian hotels, Tata Steel, ITC, Britannia, Tata Power, uh, Berger Paints, Bata, HUL, there's many more uh, there. Which are the companies that you believe have the power, the potential, the opportunity to be able to uh, continue to accelerate on growth over the next few decades? Well, I think India is going to enter a golden period. And, you know, I see India growing at 10%. So given the fact that you believe India is going to grow at 10%, uh, you talked about public sector banks as being one space that you are bullish on. Which are the other, perhaps the consumer-facing sectors, uh, where else do you believe opportunities will lie? Where else do you believe that we could see, uh, you know, the kind of growth that you anticipate that could take us to double digits? I'm very... I'm very bullish on the hospital space also. Public sector banks and hospitals.
Right. Uh, so let, let me understand from you, uh, you know, as, as you look at the various themes that are playing out today and digitization is the big theme uh, that has uh, given fresh uh, wings to many companies, to many sectors in India today, the digitization bet is playing out across different sectors. Uh, how confident do you feel about that and its transformative powers? And in what ways would you perhaps back the digitization theme? Well, I think the design thing is playing out and as time progresses, it will further play out. And I must, you know, thank Mr. Mukesh Ambani for the change he has brought about in India. Because, you know, the low cost of uh, the communication, whether in voice or in data, as is what is cost digitization in this country. And we cannot thank Mr. Ambani more for the beautiful, you know, for the low cost he has brought to digitization and, you know, to either voice and communication, both of it. I think this country has to remain eternally grateful to Mr. Ambani for what he has done to the telecommunication sector. Because that is what has enabled digitalization in this country. You know, you're talking about the telecommunication sector. We've just seen the conclusion of the 5G spectrum auction. It's essentially uh, uh, largely a two-horse race at this point in time. The government has also now put together a rescue package for BSNL. Uh, how confident do you feel about the Indian telecom sector from here on? Is that a story which you have bet on in the past? Is that a story that you will uh, look at again? <coughs> Mr. Junjunwala, I was asking you about the telecom sector and uh, whether that would now be of interest to you again, given the fact that we've seen the 5G spectrum auction conclude, we've seen the government now put in place a recovery package, a rescue package for BSNL. It's essentially been a two-horse race between Bharti uh, and Jio. Uh, Vodafone Idea is hoping that it will uh, uh, start the process of recovery. But uh, how do you view the telecom sector? Is this a bet you're willing to make again? <coughs> I don't think it's a very good sector to invest because it constantly requires investment. So therefore there are no, no true cash flows. There's no true cash generation. Right. So that, that's not a sector that you're going to be considering. But I want to ask you about what you make of where the markets are poised today, Mr. Junjunwala. Uh, we've seen the Fed hike rates. The expectation is that we'll see the Fed hike rates even further. We've just seen a 50 basis point hike coming in from the MPC. Uh, the global environment continues to be challenging. Uh, how do you see all of this impacting our markets, the domestic equity markets in the short term? What's your outlook for the markets in the short term? I think Mr. Junjunwala, thoughts on the markets in the short term? Well, I think mark 
I think I think markets will go up but you know at a slower pace regardless of global developments I think Indian markets will gain but they will gain at a slower pace Okay. Uh, Mr. Junivala, hi. Uh, it's, this is Prashant here from the studios. It's always great to have you on the air. Uh, Mr. Junivala, uh, crude oil prices uh, are one of the big variables for us because it's our largest import bill uh, and it has a, a large outsized influence on, uh, you know, the growth story here. But oil prices have fallen $40 from the recent high. Do you think that has the potential to reignite corporate earnings growth over the next many years if prices stay well behaved? No, because if, you know, health is a very important element. And if health insurance goes up, hospital utilization will go up. And it's very difficult to build hospitals. And, you know, to run them. So I am very bullish on hospital space. Right, right. Uh, no, no, you told us uh, hospitals and PSU banks are two areas that you are uh, betting on. Uh, let me ask you about uh, a couple of other sectors, uh, Mr. Yeah. Junjunwala. One is IT services, which seems to be at a bit of a crossroads. Many believe that demand for IT, Indian IT services will slow down. Uh, uh, the other side of the equation is that digital adoption is here to stay and we have some world-class, world-scale IT services companies. What is your view on that sector, IT services? <coughs> uh, Mr. Junjunwala, I just wanted your thoughts on IT services, sir. Oh. Well, I think they will grow at between 10 to 15 percent, I think for the next five years. Or I think for eternal time. The growth the growth in IT services is not going to stop regardless of recession in the world. Okay, all right. That's the big bull, Rakesh Junjurwala, clearly bullish on a few sectors out there. PSU Banks, he believes that's the way to go, so he's clearly positive out there. Extremely bullish on the hospital space, and he believes that the markets are ripe, you know, just to continue to move higher and compound gains from year on. And obviously, his venture, you know, just made a foray into the aviation space. He believes uh, there's enough reason out there to believe that the aviation sector is on an uptrend. Interesting conversation coming in there.